Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Now today's video is a bit of a departure from my normal videos but I am in a chatty mood. I wanted to come at you with a slightly different video and um, I thought that because I am a mum and a parent and this is something that I have been searching for and wanting to find videos on on YouTube that I would just film my own to get my own story out there really. Um, and it's quite a long one. <laughs> so grab a drink and sit down, make yourself comfortable if you are interested in hearing our recurrent miscarriage story. Now, a lot of my friends and family know that I have had recurrent miscarriages. Certainly lots of them know that I've had several miscarriages. I don't think we shared with everybody exactly the process that we're going through because to be honest, it's hard to keep up with what's happening when things are repeatedly changing all the time. Um, just a little disclaimer that if you are one of my friends or family, then this video might contain a little bit too much information about my uh, personal goings on. So if you are not interested in hearing about that, then maybe skip this video. But for everybody else, this is our story of recurrent miscarriage. So just as a little bit of a backstory, we have a little boy who is 19 months old. His name is Finley and he was born in September of 2017. And I fell pregnant with him on our honeymoon. We were very lucky. We decided to start trying straight away. So we got married um, on the 10th of December, 2016. We went on our honeymoon on the 12th of December, 2016. And then from my dates, I'm pretty sure he was conceived around the 12th or 13th of December, so really soon into our honeymoon. His was a very easy pregnancy. It wasn't. I was super sick. I felt terrible, but from a kind of a health and well-being point of view and his health and well-being, everything was fine. There were no issues. We had an early scan at eight weeks just because we wanted to. Uh, that was a private scan and everything was fine. We were so happily naive, I, I know I was so happily naive, thinking of course everything's fine. You know, we went to that eight week scan, we saw his heartbeat, I was a little bit nervous as anybody would be, um, but I never really expected there to be anything wrong and there was nothing wrong and how lucky were we to have that pregnancy with no issues. And then fast forward to when Finley was nine months old, we decided to start trying for our second baby because we'd always talked about wanting children close in age. I'm an only child, my husband is one of four, and he's really close with his brothers. And so the combination of the two, me wanting to have those siblings, but unfortunately not ever being able to because my parents had their own um, infertility journey that they went through to have me. And then my husband with his brothers that he was really close to, both in age and you know in relationships, we really wanted to have children that were close in age two. So at night, when Finley was nine months old, we started, we decided that we were going to start trying for our second. And we fell pregnant within about a month of that happening. And that was in June of 2018, so last year. And um, everything was fine at first. But again, we were just naively thinking, of course, that everything would be fine. I felt so lucky to have conceived so quickly again. I never thought that that was going to be a possibility. And so we were thrilled that we, were, that we had conceived so quickly again. But once I was pregnant, those kind of miscarriage thoughts, although they were there at the back of my mind, they were never really real to me. I never really thought that that would happen to us. So the first few weeks of the pregnancy went well. I had um, I had a few symptoms but nothing major. I hadn't really started having sickness yet and that was one thing that did slightly concern me because with my son, as I mentioned, I had um, HG, so that's um, hyperemesis gravidarium, I think it's pronounced for any of you that don't know. And um, basically that's when you're just, you can't keep anything down, food or water or liquids and you're just sick constantly. Um, so it was a little bit concerning to me that I didn't feel sick in those first few weeks, but nothing that really raised alarm bells. I do remember saying to a few friends 
that I thought that it was a bit strange that I didn't yet feel sick. But everybody just said to me, every pregnancy is different and maybe you're just going to be lucky this time around and not feel sick. Um, so anyway, that's just what I accepted and, and it's nice to be that way, isn't it? To be to be blissfully ignorant of the possibilities or the negative possibilities of, of uh, pregnancy loss. So I fast forward to August and I was around nine weeks pregnant, just on the cusp of turning 10 weeks. So I was really close to hitting that safe zone for pregnancy. And I was really excited that we were nearly in that kind of safe zone of the of finishing the first trimester and getting into the second trimester. And we'd been, we went down to visit my dad and his partner who live down in Devon. And, um, and after we'd been there for a few days, we were shopping in town and I went to the toilet. And when I went to the toilet in the department, in a department store, when I went to the toilet and I wiped, I saw on the tissue what was a slight tinge of brown and my heart fell out of my chest <laughs> that horrible drop in the pit of your stomach when I instantly knew that something was wrong even though it was like the slightest tinge of brown I think that that coupled with the fact that I hadn't really been feeling many pregnancy symptoms up until that point and obviously I was around like nine nearly ten weeks pregnant just really did concern me and so anyway, I rushed out the shop and felt that I immediately wanted to tell my husband, but we were with my, we were with my dad as well. And I just didn't want to talk about it then and there. I wanted to speak to Lawrence on his own. Um, so we kind of walked around town for the next, I don't know, hour or so with me feeling this pit of dread in my stomach of wondering what on earth was going on, trying to convince myself that bleeding was normal in pregnancy, which it is very normal in pregnancy for a lot of women. So if you're having bleeding in pregnancy, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a miscarriage. Uh, but for me, in my previous pregnancy, I'd never had any bleeding. So this was concerning to me. And I finally managed to find a quiet time to speak to Lawrence. And his concern <laughs> concerned me more. So then we were both worried about what was happening. The rest of the day went on and I kept on rushing to and from the toilet because I wanted to check. And sometimes there was this brown tinge, sometimes there was nothing and it was just normal. So I was really very confused about what was going on. And then as the day went on, it slightly got a little bit pinker. And I remember speaking to my friend who was also pregnant at the time and I knew that she'd had some bleeding in early pregnancy. And so I frantically sent her a message saying, what was your bleeding like? I knew that everything had been okay with her. So I just wanted that reassurance that, you know, some bleeding can be okay. And I did the research and they do say that as long as it's not a red, bright red flow with clots and often with painful cramps accompanying those, then you're probably okay. And I didn't have any cramps at that point. Um, actually, that's a lie. I had some cramps, but I'd had cramps since the beginning, and I had cramps since the beginning with my son, um, so that didn't really concern me. The cramps didn't really concern me at that time. Um, we put our son to bed, and we went to bed ourselves, and then I kept on getting up in the night because I wanted to check, and over the course of the night, the bleeding was getting stronger and more like a period basically. So in the morning I said to my husband I think that we need to go and get this checked out. So we ended up leaving our son with my dad and his partner and we went off to the hospital. And at the hospital they saw us very quickly. We went in we went to A E and they saw us very quickly in this little like side room and I remember just feeling like this feeling of um, relief almost that we were there because I thought that if there is a problem we're in the right place and these people are here to help us and almost a feeling of nothing bad's going to happen now because we're in the hospital and this is where things like this get fixed. So um, we saw this this um, 
doctor or, or nurse, I can't remember, and she took some details and she took my uh, urine sample from me. And I remember when I went to do the urine sample and gave it to her, it was it was basically red. It was completely full of blood, which obviously isn't a brilliant sign. Um, they did a pregnancy test to confirm that I um, was still showing that I was pregnant. But of course, when you're that far along, even if you are going to miscarry, the chances that your pregnancy test is positive is still quite high. Although that didn't happen to me in subsequent pregnancies and, and we'll get onto that in a minute. But um, anyway, they sent me for a scan and we went into the scan and she did an um, abdominal scan, so over my stomach first. And um, immediately when the screen came up, I could tell that it wasn't good because she asked how far along I was supposed to be and I said nine weeks and we'd had an early scan with my son at eight weeks. So I knew kind of what to expect from that kind of a scan. And basically there was really not much on the screen at all, nothing. So she did an internal, internal scan just to check. And when they did the internal scan, they could see the sac and they could see probably what was the forming embryo but they surmised that it had probably stopped growing around week six, so about three weeks before, and my body just hadn't realised that I wasn't pregnant anymore. So there'd been three weeks of kind of the embryo slowly, I guess, getting reabsorbed into my body or something. Um, so that's why there really wasn't much to see on the screen. So we left that appointment feeling obviously devastated, upset she gave me some leaflets the doctor told me told us that it was really normal that it happened to lots of women unfortunately that it didn't mean it was going to happen again that if we got pregnant within six months of that miscarriage that we were actually less likely to miscarry again which is a true statistic um and that you know the chances of it happening again were so slim so we got sent away with all these leaflets and um, I felt numb, to be honest. I don't, I think, I felt like I had a hole inside of me and, and it really took a couple of hours even to kind of understand what was going on and what had happened. Um, by the time we got back to my dad's house, which was about an hour or so later, um, I was putting my son down for his nap and as I lay him down for his nap I felt something fall out of me and um, it was awful because I was on the third floor of their house on my own with him everybody else was down on the ground floor in the garden so I had no way of contact of shouting anybody to come and help me because people wouldn't have been able to hear I couldn't walk because there was something in my underwear basically and I was scared of what it was. So I ended up having to kind of like waddle down the stairs with my son, snapped at my husband because I was just in a bit of a state to come and take him from me and put him down. And I waddled all the way back up to the top floor again. And when I went to the toilet, basically what happened was there was a load, a, a massive rush of blood and then there was a huge blood clot, which was, I guess, about this kind of a size. And um, then there was also a lot of grey, kind of grey, like hard, um, almost like jelly-ish consistency. I didn't touch it, but from what I've been told afterwards, that is actually tissue. So it can be your own tissue or it can be the, the pregnancy tissue, so the tissue of, of the baby. Um, and all of that came out. At that time, I didn't have any cramping. Um, I didn't have anything else like that happen, but then the cramps did start and the cramps lasted for probably three or four days. And they were, I would say, worse than period pains, but they weren't terrible. They were, I could cope with them with, I, you know, I had some painkillers, ibuprofen and paracetamol and, and it was okay. The bleeding continued for probably the same amount of time, about three or four days, maybe 
just under a week it was it really wasn't that bad i was very lucky in a sense to have a completely natural miscarriage to not need any medical intervention it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be in a lot of ways from a kind of a pain physical pain point of view emotionally wow it was hard um i felt loss i felt grief i felt hopeless I thought it was my fault. I was racking my brain to think of anything that I did over the course of those last nine weeks that would have caused me to have a miscarriage. I felt angry that it had happened. I felt that sense of why us, why me, why do we, you know, deserve for this to happen to us. I felt then guilty for thinking like that because there's some people that can't even have children and weren't we so lucky to have our son who we love so much and who's so amazing. So it was a real turmoil of emotions and very difficult to deal with. And it took me a, a good, probably three weeks to even begin to feel like I was getting over that. One thing that really helped was talking to other women in forums that were going through miscarriage. And the forum that I used was the Baby Centre forum. And I'll link that down below for you. They have Baby Centre in all English speaking countries, they have an Australian version I think, uh, they certainly have a US version and a UK version and there's lots of women on there from different countries as well so even if you're not in the UK, Baby Centre is a really good app, you can get it on your phone or on the computer to use and there's lots of forums on there of women that have gone through miscarriage, recurrent miscarriage, um, who are pregnant again after miscarriage so it's a good way of meeting other people that are going through the same thing. The other thing that I did was watch videos like these, just to know that I wasn't on my own, to know that the feelings that I was feeling were normal and that and that, and that really reassured me actually that I was normal and that the things that I was feeling were normal and that it would pass eventually. So after that, we decided to start trying again straight away because the doctor told us that we didn't have to wait even for my next period. So we tried again straight away. So we miscarried in the August, we tried again straight away and we got pregnant in the September, so the next month before I'd even had my next period. Um, so of course we were thrilled. It, we were cautious because it had happened before, but I very much had the mindset of, it probably won't happen again because the doctor said that it was unlikely to happen again, especially if we got pregnant within six months. Um, so I had had my positive on 11 days past ovulation and it was quite a strong positive. And I then continued to test for the next few days because if you're anything like me, that's what you do when you find out that you're pregnant and you keep on taking tests just for that reassurance of seeing the lines getting darker. Um, so I, I carried on taking tests for the next few days and then I stopped um, for a few days because they were getting darker and I thought, you know, just step away and relax, it's all going to be fine. Um, and then I think probably at f maybe 15 or 16 days past ovulation, I took another test and the line was significantly fainter than it had been. And um, by this point, I had missed my period because I have an 11 day luteal phase. So I normally come on my period um, 11 or 12 days after I'd ovulated. So I'd missed my period by a good few days by this point. Um, anyway, the test got fainter. I tested again the next day and it was fainter still. I had no cramping or bleeding at this point, but I knew that something obviously wasn't right. And then the day after that, I started to bleed. So that was our second miscarriage. Again, I felt all the emotions that I had with my first, um, probably slightly dampened because um, it had literally just happened. I almost felt like it was too good to be true to be too, too good to be true to be pregnant again straight away anyway. So, and part of me thought it's our own fault for trying again so quickly. We just kind of accepted that that's what was happening. I didn't go and see the doctor or anything, which was a mistake. I'll just interject here and say that was a mistake. If you have a miscarriage, and you're in the UK certainly, make sure that you go to the doctor every time or at least ring the doctors and tell them to put it on your notes because if you go on to have subsequent miscarriages and you don't tell the doctor that you've had a miscarriage, they don't count it. 
And that's something that we, a problem that we encountered later down the line when we came to seek help for our recurrent miscarriages. We then decided to wait a couple of months to try again. That miscarriage had been quite a short one. Again, it, probably maybe about a week of bleeding. It was certainly worse than a period, but it wasn't that bad. Um, there were some clots, more than there would have been in a period. I did have quite bad cramps at certain points, but it wasn't, it wasn't incredibly uncomfortable, let's just say. We decided to wait a couple of months more before we started trying again, mainly because we were going on holiday to New York in the December for my 30th birthday and I really didn't want to be well into my first trimester and feeling really sick when we were in New York. So we decided to wait a couple of months and it was right at the end of November that I was ovulating and we decided, well, let's try again because if I get pregnant now, then I'll only be about five or six weeks when we go to New York. So it's not going to, I hopefully won't feel terribly ill when we're there. We were incredibly lucky that we got pregnant straight away again. And I don't mean to keep saying this as like a taunt to people who can't get pregnant quickly because although we haven't suffered with infertility, we have suffered with not being able to get pregnant and we have suffered with recurrent loss. And we have now been trying for a year for our second baby. And I hope I don't mean to seem boastful in any way that we get pregnant so quickly. Um, obviously, it's still an issue for us because even though we get pregnant quickly, we can't keep the babies. So please don't take offence at me saying, I hope you don't take offence at me saying that we got pregnant so quickly again. But in any case, we did. And um, I, by the time we went to New York, I was seven weeks almost seven weeks I think about six weeks maybe pregnant and I felt terrible I felt so sick I had really bad cramps um, but not in like a miscarriage kind of way just in like a normal pregnancy cramp way um, I had really bad heartburn I was so bloated I remember getting off the plane and I looked about five months pregnant my stomach was so hard and bloated I think because of the long haul flight I had all the symptoms and I think because of that and just because it was, you know, Christmas and it was my birthday and I just thought, you know what, I don't want to be worried about this. We're not going to have another miscarriage. Let's just be positive. I've got all the symptoms in the book. I feel sick like I did with my first successful pregnancy. So I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to check my underwear incessantly every time I go to the toilet for blood because if you have had a miscarriage, you know that you do that too, don't you? It's, it's like an obsession. I can't help myself made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to obsess over the negative side of being pregnant and I was just going to enjoy the fact that I was pregnant because I was um, and everything was brilliant and we had an amazing holiday the best time in New York and then we got back and everything was fine and then a few days later I went to the toilet and just glanced at the toilet paper and there was that browny pinky tinge which is how they all started and I don't know I just I just felt like not again I felt like throw, throwing something at the wall because I was so upset that it had happened that it was happening again and I was sure that it was another miscarriage it had to be with the bleeding I did think I'm going to go to the doctor and I'm going to see because bleeding can be normal in pregnancy and I just hoped beyond hope that it was normal and that maybe we were just being unlucky with bleeding and it wasn't anything bad because I wasn't having any cramps at that point um, and we went to the doctor and the doctor did a pregnancy test just to confirm that I was definitely still pregnant before she sent me for an early scan, which was her next step. And the test came back as barely positive, faintly positive. And I absolutely broke down. I was bawling my eyes out in the doctor's surgery. She was a young doctor and I think she felt really uncomfortable with the whole situation. I was so upset and... I just couldn't believe that it was happening to us again and I went after that appointment and sat in my car 
and I just screamed, <laughs> just screamed really loudly because that was the only way that I felt like I could express the pain that I was feeling because it was like extreme pain to be losing another baby again and not understanding why it was happening to us when we had a healthy baby and we just couldn't get pregnant again. And I'd asked the doctor in that appointment if we could be referred because of recurrent miscarriage to see a consultant and she said no because we'd had a, another baby and so obviously there was nothing wrong with us, which is not true. It's not true. There can be something wrong. So if you've had a baby already and you're having recurrent miscarriage, push to be referred. If your GP won't refer you and you're in the UK, then the Tommy's website, and I'll put a link below, it's a brilliant place, it's a brilliant resource for women suffering just one miscarriage, recurrent miscarriage, pregnancy loss at any stage in pregnancy or stillbirth. And they really offer brilliant support and you will be able to be referred through them if your GP won't refer you to your local NHS practice. But anyway, I digress. So that was our third miscarriage and it this one was a bad one. Man, the cramps were bad. They were all around my stomach, all around my back, down my thighs. It was like early labor. The cramps were strong, they were painful, they would not go away. I felt like I couldn't get comfortable in any position. Um, the worst thing was that my husband was working and I had my toddler that I still had to look after and try and crawl around on the floor with and things while I was going through such pain. It was awful and the actual miscarriage itself was a brutal one. There was a lot of bleeding, a lot of clotting and it lasted for about two and a half weeks. So really severe and the worst that I've had which is interesting because obviously I wasn't necessarily the furthest along, but it was the worst. And after that miscarriage, I didn't ovulate even for 51 days. So it really messed with both my brain and my cycle. And because I was tracking my cycle, so I knew um, when I was going to ovulate again. We decided, even though we were grieving for the losses of the previous pregnancies that we were going to try again because you've got to keep trying if you if you want to have a success don't you and we we weren't being given any help so we just thought we're going to have to keep trying until it sticks so we did try again that cycle with the really late ovulation but nothing stuck I didn't get pregnant in that cycle which is unsurprising because I just think my body was in turmoil and it needed a chance to rebalance itself so we then waited obviously and tried again the following cycle so this would have been um i want to say march maybe of this year 2019 and we fell pregnant that that second cycle of trying um so the first kind of proper cycle after my period had come back we fell pregnant again and um it was very similar to my second miscarriage in that I got a positive, this time on eight days past ovulation, which is the earliest I've ever had a positive test. And I continued to test and the tests got darker. Um, and uh, I think the last test I took was 15 days past ovulation and it was pretty dark and, and definitely positive. And then I stopped taking the tests and told myself just to relax, but I was having real trouble that pregnancy. Um, I was incredibly anxious, racked with anxiety and worry and just convinced 100% that it was gonna happen again. I almost felt daily like I was gonna have a panic attack. I think because I'd been so calm about the previous pregnancy and it had still gone wrong, that I just couldn't cope anymore with the feeling of being pregnant and worrying that I was gonna have another miscarriage. So on 18 days post ovulation, I woke up and I had one more test left and I just thought, do you know what, I'm just going to take it because then I'm going to take it and the line will be nice and dark and it will reassure me that everything's okay and I can just relax a little bit. So I took the test and the line was barely there. 
it was so faint just f from that three day period it faded so much and obviously instantly then I knew what was happening it was another miscarriage and the next day I started bleeding and cramping and miscarried that baby that was our fourth our fourth baby and and we went to, I went to the doctor straight away and I spoke to her about everything and thankfully she referred us then to the infertility clinic at our local hospital which I thought was a little bit strange for miscarriage but that's apparently what they do so um, we were referred to the consultant at that hospital and that's kind of where our journey ends because we are currently awaiting our appointment with the consultant to get tests to see if there is any reason why we can't seem to hold on to a baby. However, in a little twist to the tail, I am in fact pregnant again. And it's very early days. I'm only six and a half weeks pregnant currently as I'm filming this video but I have been given progesterone from the doctor and I have been given low dose aspirin and I'm having an early scan in a couple of weeks time to check that everything's okay. So there's really a lot that's been put in place this time to kind of support us through those early weeks, those terrible early weeks in pregnancy after you've suffered a loss and miscarriage. So I'm really hoping that this is going to be a positive end to this video and to our story and to our journey, but if it's not, then I'll continue to film and I'll take you along on the journey with us for recurrent miscarriage and I will let you know what the consultant says. We're going to that appointment regardless. So I will let you know what happens at that appointment and what treatment plans are put in place for us. I'm sorry this has been a really terribly, I'm just looking at the timestamp, a terribly long video. I'm trying to, going to try and have to edit it down somewhat. If you have any questions about my miscarriage story, about recurrent miscarriage or about anything that I've talked about in my video or if you'd just like somebody to chat to about how crap it is to have miscarriages then leave a comment below because I'd love to speak to you and to make friends with you. We need all the support we can get in these hard months and years of trying to conceive babies. So thank you very much for watching my video everybody and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye.